The capita is the largest carpal bone. It is elongated from proximal to distal, and thus it contains a longitudinal axis. It articulates with the second, third, and fourth metacarpals distally, the scaphoid and the lunate proximally, the trapezoid laterally, and the hamate medially. It can also articulate with the triquetrium when the wrist is in radial deviation. It has two non-articular surfaces, the dorsal and the palmar. In this video, we're going to use a right hand specimen and a left individual bone. The proximal portion of the bone is the head. It is shaped like a dome and rounded, but it's not perfectly spherical. It consists of three articular facets, each having a different radii of curvature. Laterally, it articulates with the scaphoid. At the distal lateral aspect, there's a small, separate facet for the trapezoid. In some people, the facet for the trapezoid and the facet for the scaphoid are continuous. But in most people, a small ridge separates these two facets, and that ridge will give attachment to an interosseous ligament. At the proximal aspect, there's a facet for the lunate. And on the medial aspect, there's a long, ovoid, concave-shaped facet for the hamate. Also, at the proximal medial aspect, in some people, there will be a small articular facet, and that's for articulation with the triquetrium for when the wrist is in radial deviation. The ulnar side contains a rough depression where the strong capital hamate interosseous ligament attaches. The distal surface is flat and triangular shaped, with the apex palmar and is broader dorsally. The distal articulations are variable. It consists of two constant facets and one variable facet. The constant facets are for the second and the third metacarpals, and the variable facet is for the fourth metacarpal, which is present in about 85% of people. The lateral border of the distal surface contains a concave strip, and that's for the base of the second metacarpal. The middle portion contains a large facet, and that's for the base of the third metacarpal. And on the medial border, there's a small, concave, square-shaped facet and that's for the base of the fourth metacarpal. The dorsal surface is larger than the palmar. It's triangular shaped with the apex pointing distal medial between the bases of the third and the fourth metacarpals. It also contains a deep concave portion that is rough for the attachment of ligaments and also contains numerous nutrient foramina. The palmar surface is slightly convex. It is rough for the attachment of ligaments and it also provides origin for some fibers of the oblique head of the adductor pollicis. The capitate receives blood supply from the dorsal intercarpal and dorsal basal metacarpal arches, as well as the ulnar recurrent artery and the palmar intercarpal arch. Blood enters from the two non-articular areas, the dorsal and palmar surfaces. The dorsal and palmar vessels anastomose in about 30% of people. Most vessels enter the distal portion of the bone and then supply the proximal pole in a retrograde fashion, similar to the scaphoid. A 2017 study conducted at the Mayo Clinic found that in about 70% of people, the proximal pole does not solely rely on a retrograde blood supply. Rather, it has its own unique direct blood supply that enters from the proximal volar region via the volar capitate ligament. This is important to know because even if the distal vessels are interrupted during a fracture, the proximal pole will not necessarily undergo an AVN or avascular necrosis because it still has its own unique blood supply. For side determination, one method is to hold the bone such that the proximal portion or the head is pointing towards us. So I'm going to hold this bone. Here's that proximal dome shaped area. I'm going to have that pointing towards me. And then I'm going to find the distal surface, which will of course be on the opposite end. And if you recall, the dorsal surface is broader and the apex was palmar because it's triangular shaped. Hold it so that the dorsal surface is pointing up. So again, the proximal portion is a dome. Have that pointing towards you. Have the distal surface, the distal surface away from you with the broader surface pointing up. And then if you find this elongated facet for the hamate, that will actually point to the side of the body from which the specimen came. So in this case, this elongated facet for the hamate is pointing left. 
So this would be a left specimen. The capite is really fractured because of its protected position. It's surrounded by a number of bones. Scaffold capite syndrome is a combination of a fracture of the capitate and the scaphoid in which the head of the capitate rotates 90 to 180 degrees.